Over the next couple of videos, we're gonna be talking about CSS Grid. It's a super powerful CSS layout system and it's built in uh, to all browsers as of 2017. By the end of this course, you're gonna be able to build this layout right here, which is what we call the Holy Grail CSS layout. And it basically represents any layout, it's not like one specific thing, but any layout that has a header, a nav, a main content, sidebar or like ads, and then a footer at the bottom. As a web dev, it's really important that you know how to build this, and I wanted to show you how we can do it really easily with CSS Grid and Flexbox. And speaking of, there are a few requirements for taking this course, and I've covered all of them in previous videos. So if you didn't know, I'm Zach. Uh, I write web applications and teach web dev on YouTube here. And one of the series that I'm creating on this channel is called the Full Stack Roadmap. It takes you from the very beginning, learning how to write JavaScript, how to write code, um, through HTML, CSS, and everything that you need to know to go from a complete beginner to deploying an e-commerce app in React. If that sounds interesting to you, check out this video and go to the description and click on the playlist that has all the videos in order so you know exactly when to watch them. On that playlist, I have all of the prerequisites covered here. So go watch the video on HTML, CSS, and the most recent one on Flexbox. There's gonna be a lot of shared concepts be between CSS Grid here and some of the concepts we covered within the Flexbox tutorial, so be sure to at least have a working knowledge of that. In this mini course, we will be trying to cover pretty much everything you need to know about CSS Grid. Um, and by the end of it, I want you to be able to explain what Grid is, uh, understand all the basic syntax, so I'll show you that in a second. And most importantly, understand how we can take CSS Grid and Flexbox and use them together. Many web devs, uh, including my former self, think that CSS Grid and Flexbox are incompatible. They compete with each other. And that's not true. There is a great use case for both of them in the same project. And hopefully by the end of this mini course, you're gonna see exactly how that happens. We're gonna cover all of these properties. Um, there's a lot here and I know it's overwhelming, but I promise you, if you have a little bit of a background in Flexbox from that previous tutorial, once again, please watch that before diving into this course. But if you have that, prerequisite knowledge, this is not gonna be impossible. I'm gonna walk you through every single property here and we're gonna lay it out in a very logical structure so you can kind of group these into your head. As you can see, just like Flexbox, we have the concept of a container and that container's children elements. So with Flexbox, it was the flex container and flex items. Here we're talking about the grid container and grid items. Each of these properties here are going to either apply to the container level or the item level, and they're also going to either pertain to sizing or alignment. So I promise you it's not quite as hard as it looks here. To add to the confusion though, this is where CSS gets a little bit difficult. Um, with most CSS properties, there are shorthand properties that we can use um, to express the same thing in less lines of code. In my personal opinion, shorthand properties, unless they're like very basic shorthand properties like uh, the padding property, are not meant for beginners to start working with. We've gotta understand the framework first and then we can start layering in that efficiency that comes from uh, using these shorthand CSS properties. Let me give you a very quick example. If we go back to the first page, these are the ones that we are going to cover. Um, and we look up into the top right with the grid container sizing properties. You'll see that we have grid template rows and grid template columns. Now if we go to the next slide, these are the shorthand properties. Um, you will see those, so grid template columns and grid template rows. Those can be kind of summarized and wrapped up in several shorthand properties. So we can use, either use the grid property, which pretty much defines the whole grid all in one property. It's pretty confusing if you're a beginner. Or we can use something like grid template, which does something similar, but doesn't quite do everything at once. So throughout the CSS grid course, 
you obviously have all of these properties available to you and you might be watching and say, why are you writing four lines when you could write one? And there's a very good reason for that. It's really hard to learn a framework and learn the shortcuts at the same time. So we're gonna instead just do everything longhand and do our best to learn the framework and then you can start to tack on all that efficiency later. I promise we're about to get into the lesson, but I really wanna talk about why we're using this in the first place. Why would I spend an entire course to talk about CSS Grid? To someone who's been developing web applications since the early 2000s or even earlier, it's very apparent why CSS Grid makes sense. Now, I myself have not been coding for that long. It's been about five years at this point. But even for me, I've gone through some of the pains of the pre-grid uh, era of CSS, and it's a little bit painful to create web applications without it. So let's briefly go way back. So prior to 2009, um, this is when Flexbox came out. I think my facts are right on that. Um, but we pretty much had hacky solutions galore when it came to CSS layouts. So if you wanted to make a fixed nav bar and a fixed um, side nav bar and, uh, and a side element and then main content and a footer, just like that holy grail layout, it was extremely difficult to do and you had to use you know, floats and clear fixes and all sorts of um, solutions that were never meant to happen when CSS was created. From 2009 to 2017, so this is before uh, Grid was released but Flexbox was um, in the picture, everything got a lot easier. You could make a lot more predictable layouts. But since Flexbox is one dimensional, there was still a little bit um, of a pain point for front end developers, um, especially when you wanted to create literally a grid and you wanted all the items to have determinant, you know, widths and heights. So in 2017, all of the web browsers kind of in unison just um, had support enabled for CSS grid. So grid was released and from that point forward, designing layouts for the web, of course, after learning CSS grid in the system and how it works and stuff became a lot easier. If you learn this framework, you can create CSS layouts that actually make intuitive sense. So previously you've got all these hacks going on and you're like, why does this element do this that way? Um, but now it's very determinate. You can explicitly state how everything should be laid out on the page and you're not gonna get a whole lot of uh, unexpected behaviors. For some, it's good enough to take my word for it and just go ahead and learn CSS Grid. Um, for others, you may have to go through that pain. Um, you may be a little bit stubborn. I'm kind of like that myself, where you have to go through and understand the background and try to make layouts without CSS Grid before you're gonna really uh, recognize the value in what we're learning here. So if you're still here watching this video, which according to my YouTube stats, most of you will not be here still, um, thank you for sticking around, and it also means that you're probably sold on the idea of learning CSS Grid. Now there's just one thing I wanna talk about before we really dive in, and that is browser support. Probably most of you won't care about this, um, but if you happen to have stumbled on this video and you also happen to support Internet Explorer and a couple other old versions of certain browsers, in your day job, you have to know that CSS Grid is not supported um, fully in all browsers. Once again, very few people will have to deal with this, but if you do deal with this, you'll come into your CSS, you'll put an at supports rule, and you'll type display grid, and then you put all of your styles here um, related to grid. So this rule will basically check for you and say, hey, does this browser support CSS Grid? If so, apply all of these grid rules. If this rule does apply to you and you actually have to support older browsers, I wanna thank you for your service. It's uh, honest work to support Internet Explorer these days. For this tutorial, we're gonna get rid of this though. I don't wanna deal with this. There's enough to learn with CSS Grid already, so I'm not gonna deal with that. To get us started, I've pasted in some HTML and CSS, very basic. And if you watched the Flexbox course, like I told you to before coming to this course, you know exactly what we're looking at here. We're looking at a container and then child uh, list of child elements. With Flexbox, you've got the Flex container and the Flex items. With CSS Grid, you have the Grid container 
and the grid items. So every direct child to a grid container is going to be a grid item. And just like Flexbox, to enable the grid system, you come into the container itself, you type in display grid. So now this top level container here is a CSS grid container. As we've talked about many times, a single property like the display property literally changes all the rules of the game for all of the other elements once you do it. It's no different here. We now have all of these grid items abiding by the CSS grid system rules. And those rules are what we're going to cover here. Before we get any further with these properties, I wanna give you that 10,000 foot view of CSS Grid. So really the difference between Flexbox and CSS Grid is 1D versus 2D. So Flexbox goes in one dimension, and we talked about how the flex direction is either row or column, which defines the main and the cross axis within your Flexbox container. With CSS Grid, it's a little bit different because we have two dimensions. We have the horizontal and the vertical direction, and we actually have properties to control the sizing and the um, alignment of the elements on both of these uh, dimensions, which we kind of call tracks. As you can see in the visual here, I've just labeled a couple of these. So we've got a vertical track number one, so this would be the first column, and then a horizontal track number one, which would be the first row. And as you can see, this grid comes with grid lines, and then between the grid lines are going to be what we call the grid area. What we can do with CSS Grid is we can take the grid items themselves, and we can define, you know, looking at these lines that we've laid out in the template that we've created, we can define where those items are going to be placed and how big they are. So for example, this first item, number one, we have put it between row number one and row number two, and between column number one and column number three. This is obviously a three by three grid, so you have um, nine total little grid cells. So this number one item is going to be two little cells wide and one cell tall. Now if you look at number three over here, we are placing this between column three and column four and making it three cells high. So you can see that we can, we will actually be able to do this really easily with just a few CSS rules. Prior to CSS Grid, this would be a nightmare to try to create um, using the built-in CSS properties. So as we go through the properties, I wanna show you two great cheat sheets that you can have open. Um, I would definitely recommend picking one, using both, having them available to you as you're learning um, or using CSS Grid for the first couple of weeks. So the first one here, and both of these are gonna be in the description below, so don't worry about the links here. You can find those easily. Um, here's the first one. This is just a very high level view of all of the properties um, for grid. So you've got the container properties and the children properties down here, and it gives you just a very uh, small little visual of what they do. Now, looking at this firsthand, it's not gonna make any sense. Um, so we'll walk through how this all works and then this cheat sheet will become very helpful to you. There's also this one here, which um, is a little less structured in terms of um, summary, but it gives you a lot of interactive ways to work with Grid. So we can come here and just click on different configurations and see what those do just to experiment out with them. So two really great cheat sheets, links in the description, have them open um, after this course when you're building with grid. Congratulations if you've made it to this point. You are obviously committed enough to listen to my long-winded introduction. I think everything that I said here in this first video um, was very crucial to moving forward um, in learning grid. So congrats if you made it this far. The next video is going to be talking all about the uh, container level properties and how do we actually use this system. So be sure to click that, uh, that link for the next video. And again, there's a playlist in the description below so that you can see everything in order.